Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today I've got something hiding under my my magic. If you ever go to a magician, always you'll cover stuff up. Ours is a trash bag. So you ready for the magic reveal of Ta-da! Alright, get rid of that. So what is this? Why are there wooden dowels stuck through a six-quart tub? Well, this is our first ever prototype. That's probably how they're gonna be. Uh, carpet python tub for a baby. Now, a couple things with this. One, why, why, why? Well, you cannot run, well, you shouldn't say you can't. You can do a lot of things. You shouldn't run a carpet python as a baby, especially, even adults need climbing, but as a baby, they need a perch. My experience with my, my carpet when he was a little guy, uh, and my other carpet, too, when it was a little guy, is they, they hardly ever got to perch. They like to perch. They almost act like a green tree. They stay up high. So we wanted to give this carpet python a couple different perches. So it'll have one here. It'll have one here. It can go between the two on a higher and lower without ever touching the ground. We'll put this water dish somewhere like here. So if it wants to drink, it'll be able to drink without having to touch the ground. We'll give it all kinds of ways to maneuver itself without having to, you know, get on the ground. Uh, so that's the point of the purchase. Now, how do we do this? Well, it's real simple. And again, I'm not saying this is the only way. As a matter of fact, this is my first attempt. So, you know, if you have a better method, by all means, man, you do you. I took and made holes in my tub. Now, I just did that with a soldering iron. That's what I call it, the hole melter. And it punches nice holes, widen them out a little bit. And then I used some wooden dowel rods. Right here would be the wooden dowel rods I'm using. You can see there they are. Uh, they're not very thick. And then we use some rubber bands on the end of the wooden dowel rod. So those are just to keep the dowel rod from being able to slide out so I can shake it. Originally, my plan was, well, my first thought was to do just what we did. And I thought, well, it may spin. So I thought about running the rubber band on the inside, looping it back to the outside. But there is a concern with them getting your tail in there or whatnot. So we found we put a little pressure on the tub and we put these rubber bands on like, yay. Then it would have enough pressure that they don't spin look at that whoa 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 so our first thought which was my first thought then i had a second thought then kurt had my first thought was like well, we, I was like, well then we tried it and it actually worked so i overthought it i over engineered a simple solution to a problem we said it takes simple so this will keep that from spinning around so the snake can sound there comfortably few things about this should you choose to go this route if i could have found some long pieces of plastic that would have worked probably better. This is gonna be a one-time use. These wooden dowel rods, by the time this snake is done, I'm just gonna probably throw those out. Uh, I spent a whopping like $4 to make a bunch of these, so no big deal. Reason being is they're gonna get moisture on them, they're gonna have all those types of things happening. Number two, wooden dowel rods. I just said I spent like four bucks buying a bunch of these. Don't go cheap, okay, don't go cheap. Don't buy ones unless you know what wood they're made of. These are oak. Remember, there are certain woods that snakes are toxic to snakes, can irritate their skin. You don't want aspens. You don't, well, aspens, okay, but you don't want pines. You don't want things like that. So if you go to some unlabeled wood and it's a soft wood, you could run into some problems, right? Right. So don't go getting just any wood. Ask when you go, what kind of wood is that? And they said, I don't know. And I said, ugh. Then I went and bought the more expensive oak. That way I knew I was going to be safe for my animals. So that is one thing too, if you use a wooden dowel rod, make sure and get a wood that is safe. On the bottom, we'll probably either go with just a paper towel or we'll go with maybe just a little bit of light substrate. The reason for a paper, paper towel in here is since the snake's not gonna really sit on the ground, it's not gonna need to burrow, and that will allow a little more heat to come up through the plastic without the insulation, because it's gonna heat itself from up here. So it'll probably be on a paper towel. This will be the warm area. This will be the less warm area, higher up, you know, farther away from the heat source, it can drink and do all that from there. So, Kurt, any questions about our lovely, first ever, baby carpet python setup? Is that housing for just one? Yes, so this will be housing just for one. And again, lots will go do and disinfect and do all that. You can see it's got some paper towel residue. But this was mostly just seeing, hey, does our idea work? And we wanted to share it with you. What we'll do when they all come out of the eggs, I'll put them in a tub. There they can be on the ground. They haven't had their first shed yet. I'm not going to worry about it. Once they have their first shed, I will then take them individually, put them into these. And this is where we'll begin to do feeding and things like that out of or these type of tubs right here. So that is the plan. Any other questions? And I want you guys to mark your calendar because that is two videos in a row where Kurt has asked a good question. 
instead of just saying, nope, he hit me with something that was, I thought, really well thought out and really good. So let's all give him some kudos on that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.